Hello everybody and welcome back to another class. Um, today's kind of an exciting day. We, we've completed our first project and I'm really excited to see those. And I, I see that those of you that have turned it in and I appreciate the work that you've put into it. Um, that first project's not an easy one. And uh, and I hope you feel accomplished in, in the skills that you've learned and, and things that you've been able to do. <coughs> Today we're going to start another project, okay? And so we're not slowing down; we're picking up speed. Uh, this one will also be a challenging one, but I think it'll it will also be very interesting to you. Um, so this will be project number two. Uh, so here we are. It's you know the beginning of February. This project is scheduled to be due the very first week of March. So uh, like the first one, we'll have a couple weeks. However, um, time is ticking and. This project actually is a little bit shorter in terms of the amount of time that we have as compared to the first one. I'm going to come in just here on our main page and click on Project 2. Now, we don't have any uh, anything recorded yet for, for how we'll accomplish Project 2, but let's just see what it says that we're asked to do. So for this project, we will be looking at automobile accidents along Utah highways, okay? Um, and we're going to act somewhat as investigators and create a map that helps us learn things about what has happened at a crash site. Now I have tied a link here, and this is also available to you on the uh, Utah GIS portal. Um, however, I've posted the link here called crashmapping.utah.gov. And this is a map, um, interactive map that's updated uh, constantly and records accidents that have happened in the state of Utah. So let's go ahead and, and we'll look at that in, in just a moment. But just to give you an idea, um, we're going to find a location here in San Pete County or near the edge of the county um, where we've seen a number of accidents. And we're going to go and, and investigate what has happened at those sites and investigate maybe causes or, or things that we can see because of the map that we generate uh, to help us fill in some information about the accident and maybe how it could be prevented in the future. So um, that's the idea and, and kind of the long-term goal. Now as part of this we will be collecting data and I'll discuss that in just a few moments. But we're going to go and collect aerial images using a UAV. Unmanned Aerial Vehicle is what UAV stands for. Um, and you probably might know it as a drone. Okay, so we're going to go fly uh, UAV over the crash site and adjacent to it to try and capture images that will help us recreate a model of the area. Okay, so, so we'll need to find some time to go out into the field. I've, uh, I'd like each of you to look at your schedules and determine a time as I've outlined uh, to for us to be able to go out. Um, we'll be using a couple different software packages that might be new to you. One will be Pix4D, uh, another will be ArcScene. I don't know that you've used ArcScene before. Um, and I'll discuss and, and show you briefly each of those in, in just a moment. Uh, what we'll be turning in is first a, a fly-through video of the accident location. So we'll generate a video that, that shows the area and, and kind of pans around, zooms through the area to help us get a sense of, of what it's like. This might be something that would be presented to um, government officials or those who have some jurisdiction over the design and, and maintenance of our roadways. So as you generate that, think of them as your audience. Finally, you'll uh, write a report that you'll turn in. Um, and the report should, should go through a couple different things. It should talk about uh, what information we have about the crash site from, from what we'll look at in terms of what the government or the state has posted. Uh, this would include the type of accident, whether injuries were involved, if the accident was fatal. Um, the road conditions, time of day, time of year, and any other conclusions that might be uh, included in that report. Um, 
I'd like you to discuss in the report the methods that you took, and that's what we'll be developing over the next few weeks is these methods, and talk about any any other causes to the accident that may uh, be understood because of our map. Draw some conclusions because of our map. Um, now, lots of these conclusions you may not know, but put it out there as a hypothesis. And then finally, as you wrap up the report, maybe talk about what other data might be needed to be included into a study like this to best understand uh, the crash site. So that's kind of an overview of the project, if you will. Um, let's jump in, and, and I'm going to click on this crashmapping.utah.gov, and let's look around. Okay, so as I click on that, it brings up our state. Um, and lots of colored dots, okay, with numbers in them. Each number represents an accident that has occurred. Now, as I remember right, this map shows accidents since 2013. So this is not as historical as maybe we would want um, to best understand trends. However, it does give us four years of, of information. So with that being said, you can see that lots of accidents have happened in very populated areas. Um, and right along the I-15 corridor, Highway 6, and any other major roadway um, is where we're seeing some trends. Now, as you look uh, right around the San P area, okay, there's we have orange dots, okay? <laughs> They're not red dots like they have in Provo and Salt Lake, but several accidents that have occurred in, in our area. So um, I'd like you to zoom in, and, and let's do this together. Let's just kind of look around and see where accidents are occurring. Uh, now, as you do this, there's something you'll notice about San Pete County. Most accidents happen on Main Street of a town, and usually where Main Street and Center Street come together. Okay, So you'll see that's the case here in Ephraim it seems like right near the stoplight is where we're having most of our accidents um, or along 100, uh, 100 south. So lots of accidents kind of happening probably bumper to bumper. Uh, there's probably parking lots, parking lot accidents here near the college. So those accidents, um, you know, are, are fender benders usually in type okay that are happening on main streets of of these roads main street and center street uh, let's look at Moreau and I okay we're seeing a lot of accidents right here where the highway comes in onto main street and oh main street and center street um so lots of those like someone bumping into the back of another vehicle i i don't want us to focus on those so much we usually know how those could be prevented and it's that people need to pay more attention um, I would like to investigate other types of accidents. So let's zoom in over here between Moroni and Mount Pleasant. There's been several different accidents. As, as I zoom in, these, these uh, clusterings separate out into uh, individual locations, these blue dots. And I can click on them, and there's some information provided. So the date of the accident, the time that it was reported, um, the the event now this one says embankment so they probably hit an embankment it says there was an injury up here at the top um, and it gives us some statement on the weather and the roadway so it was cloudy however it was mid-morning so that means it was light even in february at 9 40 in the morning uh, there's plenty of light it says the roadway was dry okay so so that's just a little bit of a clue about that accident uh, let me click up here so this one occurred also in 2014, also late morning. Um, looks like uh, someone rear-ended another another vehicle. Okay, the weather was clear, the roadway was dry, it was summertime. Okay, so that's, that's interesting. Um, here someone has bumped into a post. Let's see if there's uh, anything here. Now, on this cluster, there's a couple accidents that occurred at the exact same location. And so there's going to be a little button here to toggle between the two. Now this one was an animal. So someone hit an animal, and, and if you've lived in Sampete long enough, you know that that 
is a likely thing that can happen and very unexpectedly can a, a deer or another animal run out in front of your vehicle. Um, and those I think would be interesting to study. Uh, this one out here, uh, now, now you know they hit an animal, it was snowing, um, it was a snowy roadway, it was right at noon. So um, that's good information for us. That would be an interesting place to investigate. Up here where they hit the the post, oh, and it must have been right here. Nope, next one, I'm sorry. Okay, so where they hit a post or a pole, that also to me is an interesting accident that I think would be worth us studying to understand, well, where was that post and pole? Um, they were coming, were they coming out of a turn? Were they going into the turn? What could we learn about that accident to help us understand maybe uh, what could be prevented, what could be modified on the construction of the roadway to make it so that there's not other accidents at that location. So um, look around this map, try to find an area that's interesting to you and, and find two to three areas that are interesting to you and then send those to me. And, and you don't need to give me specifics of where they're at. Just tell me, hey, I'm interested in one location, uh, you know, maybe out here between Moroni and Mount Pleasant. And I'm interested in another location that is uh, past Manti, between Manti and Sterling, okay? Or Pigeon Hollow Junction. So find three, even four locations that you're interested in and send those to me. That will help me uh, determine where we as a class will travel to to collect data. So the idea um, of what we're going to do is we're going to meet up as a class and um, go and visit these sites. And, and we're going to take pictures while we're there, try to gather any evidence of what occurred um, at that accident based on what we can see. So, so we are detectives of sorts okay, that, that are going to try and understand um, the history of of what's happened with this accident. So so look at that. Uh, study several locations so that we can get in a car. And, and I'm going to look at the, the suggestions you have and choose a place where, you know, everyone in the class maybe has an idea of where to go. Um, and that way we will uh, gather data on, on everyone's location while we're in that area. Okay. So, um, kind of an interesting map, interesting to study, lots of information here, and a classic and perfect use of GIS, okay? Okay, um, now how are we going to recreate uh, what has happened, or how are we going to recreate a map that's that gives us valuable information? Something that I think is going to help us a lot is to understand the terrain near the roadway. Also to look at the roadway itself. Are we going into a curve, coming out of a curve, um, over a hill, uh, through a valley? Um, what's the condition of the roadway? So elevation data is going to be pretty valuable to us. Um, it would be nice to maybe, you know, maybe we'll notice some trends while we're there. Maybe we'll notice some, some animal trails uh, where animals typically pass. So we're going to watch for all of those things while we're out there. And then we're going to uh, use a software package called, while we're out there, uh, let me just back up. While we're out there, we will collect aerial photo uh, imagery okay, from our UAV. And we'll bring those back and use a software package called Pix4D. Now I have Pix4D open. And I just want to show you, uh, and I'll later on I'll, I'll give you, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll create a video that talks about how to use Pix4D. But let's just look around really quick. Um, if I come to the Home tab, I can start a new project. In the map view, this shows, so this is up Ephraim Canyon. This is a flight that I did uh, with students um, about a year ago. Okay, and we flew a UAV up and around this slide, okay, that's up the canyon, and collected images. Each red dot shows an image, and the green line shows the sequence of the flight. So images have been collected. Uh, you can see the flight path. Now, they're not as evenly spaced as maybe we'd like, but 
among the images there was plenty of overlap which was good for us. If I look at the ray cloud you can kind of see where the camera was and what the actual picture was. For most of them the camera was directed uh, downward. For others I pointed the camera upward and collected a few images. And from those images the software has created this surface that I'm rotating around right now that regenerates what the land is like up the canyon. Okay, Here's the slide. There's lots of data points of the slide. Well, we collected a lot of images of the slide, so we'd expect that. And let me just pan around. Um, so this was valuable data that, that really gave us a sense of the land, the layout of the land. Now, uh, I took all of that data and Oh, let me see if I can turn on the point cloud. This may take just a moment. Okay, perfect. So as I turn on the point cloud, this might look all of a sudden somewhat realistic. Okay, you can see there's some taller trees over here. We don't have real, we've got plenty of holes. Okay, but each of these pixels represents an object or a part of an object that is really in existence. And uh, and you can really explore areas pretty well right here from our seat from a bunch of pictures taken from a drone. Okay, and we can kind of look up at this slide. Now it was snowy this day, so so it's white covered. Okay, um, we can look up at kind of the wall of the slide here, and and we could measure thicknesses of layers, lots of information that we could gather from this regenerated model. We're going to do the same thing. Now PIX40 is good for us, it helps generate a model, um, but that's that's about its limits. Okay, It gives us the three-dimensional shape, which is actually, I mean it's that's a huge thing to have done for us, but um, but that that's where we take the data and take it somewhere else. Okay, so we're going to want to generate a model just like this, and, and like I say, I'll, I'll show you how to do that later. And then we're going to bring it into another software package. Uh, this one is very similar to ArcMap. It's made by Esri as well, and it's called ArcScene. And maybe you've used it, maybe you've looked at it. Um, as I, here on the start menu of my computer, ArcGIS is a drop-down, and inside of the ArcGIS folder I have ArcMap, and hey, here's Arc Scene. Okay, so let me open up Arc Scene. Now I've taken uh, another model and, and put it into Arc Scene. It's a little bit farther down the canyon, more towards Ephraim, that we can look at inside of Arc Scene. Arc Scene allows us to do a little bit more analysis on this terrain. Okay, and notice that we're also able to bring it up. Oh. And I'm running some pretty heavy software all at once, so I think this computer is, is getting a little bit slowed down in the process. Um, so we'll wait for it to catch up. But ArcScene is able to bring in lots of data, and uh, not only to show it in, in its three-dimensional location and, and the three-dimensional contours and layout of the terrain, but... Um, it allows us to do some analysis at the same time, just like we're able to do an arc map, except now that we're we're looking at more of a three-dimensional image that we can pan around. Uh, so we'll talk about that. We can bring in shape files. We can bring in. Uh, we can label things. We can generate videos, all from arc scene that maybe could help us uh, see what happened at the site of the each of these accidents. So I'd, I'd like you to, to think about that. Um, think about what we're trying to accomplish and how you might do it. Now I am going to... There we go. I think I, I had just panned us right out of the area. So this is again lower in, in Ephraim Canyon. This is where the new Canyon Road parts off of the main Ephraim Canyon Road. And I'm just kind of looking around here, you'll notice here that our image is not so pixely uh, in that we don't have like floating pixels. 
everything is protruded off the ground, um, everything that has elevation or, or of any sort. Okay, which helps kind of fill in the gaps, even though we can still see there's limitations on what data that we have. Um, this is kind of interesting here. You can see the flume trail up here. Uh, here's the roadway, how it's cut into the into the canyon. The stream bed down here below. Here's the culvert. Um, so lots of information provided to us, lots of things that we can do with ArcScene. Okay? And it is. It is the 3D mapping of ArcGIS. Now, there's a new software package called ArcGIS Pro, and it also does three dimensions. Um, uh, I think we're going to look at it at the end of the semester. Okay, it's it's quite new, and, and I am not real familiar with it yet, uh, but we'll be learning about it over the next coming weeks. And we'll bring that uh, into our classroom. Okay. But like I say, so this should look similar. There's a catalog over here. Here's our table of contents. We can add shape files. We can add rasters. And the rasters then can be given depth. Okay. So, so that's kind of what we have and, and what we're up against uh, in terms of software. Now, like I said, I'll be taking, uh, we'll be going out collecting data in the field. And then there will be a video on how to generate your uh your your surface using Pix4D and I'll also create a, a video to, to get us started in Arc Scene and then also to help us develop further skills in Arc Scene. Um, lastly, so I mentioned that we're going to go out in the field. Um, again, uh, please review this map. Look at areas that you would like to investigate more closely. Um, and anywhere that might be interesting, let's let's go there. Now we have tons of options because there's been tons of accidents, but let's go somewhere kind of interesting, which maybe where there's a little bit more terrain, uh, maybe you know up near a mountain. Um, so so look over your options there, and and let's figure it out and and bring this back uh, to our discussion next week. Um, so. So please send in those what you're thinking, and then next week we will go out and collect data. We'll be flying our, our, our UAV as a class, and each of you will also be flying that and controlling it as we gather data and gather images. So I, I'm excited for it. I think it'll be great. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me, and, and, uh, and let's start on project number two. Um, thank you.